Ain't gon' lie, I feel flyer than I ever been We stay ballin', this New Orleans, I'm a pelican It's going down in the nest, wild, wild west Come in town and you best, show us some respect Three point threat, I bet I make it rain If it's up, then don't jump stupid like your ankle sprain Always say it, never hate the player, hate the game Jump away the dang late, punch a train Post game, big Q, talking about business Bird game, YouTube, they ain't flying Locking winners, lock up the division mission, get into the finals, finish competition, then it's going win the title. I know the flyer than you can get, such a thread that the ref just might call a tag. You can double, you can press, but you can't check. Right, left, slide by you like a Euro stand. Fly Pelican, fly Pelican, fly Pelican, and I tell them that birds of a feather flock together. Fly down, I'm a Pelican forever, Pelican forever, and never, and never, and never, and never, and never, and never say birds of a feather flock together. Yeah, if I die, I'm a Pelican forever, Pelican forever. We have to find our defensive identity. And right now, we, we're not guarding the way we're capable of. And those are things that we can control. Um, we can make a decision as a team that, you know, we want to guard better. And we just we just haven't been doing it. Lost eight out of the last 11. How much of that is a tough road trip and down your two primary scorers versus a problem that needs to be addressed, a lesson that needs to be learned? It's a combination of all, all those things. Uh, we just didn't get into the ball. I didn't, I didn't feel like they felt us uh, much in terms of guarding the ball. Then when they when we did have an opportunity to stop them, we, our discipline has to be better. We're fouling guys, putting guys at the free throw line. They were the aggressors, and, and that's why they shot, you know, extremely well from the field is because they made a decision that they're, they're going to force the issue, get to the paint. If they didn't have it, they kicked out to guys and they made shots. Right now you guys are 3-8 in the last 11 games. How much concern do you have over just the direction the team is going in right now? I have no concerns on all of that. I mean, it's a part of the NBA season. We understand where we are. We'll keep working, keep getting better. Um, but, you know, nobody's going to come save us. we got to continue to play and trust each other, which our guys do for the most part, continue to compete and, and believe in our capabilities. And you got to the tough spot because it just seems like the guys you have available to you change every night. Like, I mean, how much – that's the part of the journey is, you know, you dig down and you go back once again, you watch some film, you try to figure out um, what are the things that we're doing well, we want to keep doing them and what some areas that we can improve on. Um, guys being in and out of the rotation is, is it's a part of the NBA. It's, there's many teams dealing with it, not just us. Um, we'll, we'll continue to, Search and, and figure it out. A little rusty. Her was a little rusty today, especially with his fouls. Um, uncharacteristic of him, but you know, hopefully he can get a few games under his belt. Kind of going back and building off of Will's question, it has been a lot of different lineups that you guys have to use. It seems tonight that maybe on the defensive side there were some more, maybe some more confusion than than what you, I guess you're, you're used to with that kind of. You think that played a part. Uh, I don't I don't think tonight was that case. I just think that they once again they were the aggressors. You you give you gotta give those guys credit. Um Wagner, uh he he 
did whatever he wanted to tonight. He got in the paint. He hit threes. He got to the free throw line. He found his teammates. He guarded on the other end. We just got to bring it. No excuses. Okay. All thanks, Pelicans. You're now tuned in to the Pelican Post Game Report. Much love to the flock. Appreciate you guys joining us for an episode of the Pelican Post Game Report. Pels, don't take care of business tonight. They lose 123 to 110 to the Orlando Magic, a very, very interesting team. Uh, and uh, the Pelicans had this game for much of the game until the fourth quarter happened when they got a score 35 to 19. The flow kind of fell out on the Pelicans tonight. They were Coach Willie saying they just got to keep on working through it. And indeed, the Pelicans, no Najee Marshall tonight. No, of course, no B.I., no Zion, and no win. Pelicans, eight of the last 10 games, D.C. Eight of the last yeah. 10, bro. Very interesting. So with that being said, I'm Big Q. We got DC on the in, in the stream. Much love to the fan. Appreciate y'all being up in this thing. Please feel free to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button as we jump up into this thing. DC, let's cover this, man. This was one that I picked the Pelicans where should have beat the Orlando Magic. They just didn't put together a full game, man. A lot of stuff happened in the matchup. Uh, we just uh, failed to get it, man. And uh, in the end, this is three straight losses by the Pelicans. They're now 26 and 20. So let's let's talk about it, bro. Yeah, man. They, uh, they really dropped the ball and now. You, you had to get this one. Going and playing an Orlando team. You already dropped one at home to Miami. And uh they just couldn't get it done. But it was very similar to the Miami game. Just got slaughtered in the fourth quarter, man. We pretty much up in the game. For the whole game, dominated the game at points and, uh, before halftime, and just had no answers for for Wagner. Um, we couldn't get it going as a unit. CJ kind of had an off night, even though he didn't really play bad. Um, inefficient shooting, didn't hit our free throws. Let him get to the line more than us. Got the rebound they're taken care of, but. You know, we just dropped the ball in other areas. Didn't have a whole bunch of turnovers, but crucial turnovers that kind of led to them handling their business. And we just dropped the ball, man. Uh, guys were trying and just couldn't come through, man. This this is uh, one of those losses where well. it's, it's a little concerning. But the Magic are a good team. They're a good young team. And... I just think the fact, the fact that we changed up the rotations, Herb came back, not Najee missing, who was a huge part of this team without uh, B.I. and Zion, and the fact we only went four deep while the Magic went like six or seven deep. You know, uh, we let Cole Anthony tear us up off the bench. All of those, that combination of things just led to us losing this game. But, um, uh, Still not super low on my pals, but this this is a little concerning. You would want them to be able to beat this team. But uh, I'm just really looking forward to basically after the All-Star break, you know, uh, but we still got to ride that wave through the rest of January because it's not going to stop. We might get some good news on Monday, so that's what we can look forward to at this point. Let's look into the team statistics for tonight's matchup. Fam, the Pelicans 41 and 91 from the field, 45.1% shooting 10 of 35 from downtown 28.6. They were 18 of 24 from the charity stripe for 75% flat. Orlando 39 of 75 for 52%, 15 of 30 from downtown, 50% shooting from downtown, 52% shooting from the field, four or less field goal attempts by. The Magic, and they went to the foul line 34 times, converted 30 of 34 for 88.2%. So a lot of the numbers worked well for the Magic, plus hitting a high clip at the foul line wouldn't hurt either. If you can see 18 attempts made by the Pelicans from the foul line versus 30 by the Magic, hmm. 42 to 39 rebound advantage goes to the Magic as well. 29 to 28 at advantage for the Pelicans. Assist while it's 9 to 2, also for the Pelicans, 5-5 five, five on the blocks. Total turnovers, Pelicans had 11 with nine points off versus 15 by the Magic with 17 points off the turnover. Largest lead, 14 by the Pelicans, 16 
by the magic. And of course, one of the crippling things that you see is the fourth quarter lead in which Pelican surrendered the game in the fourth quarter, 35 to 19 in the final quarter. Seems like they just, uh, you know, they just ran out of it. But anyway, DC, let's talk team stats right quick. Oh, my bad. You hear me now? Well, there's, uh, there's three stats that stand out. Obviously, the, the free throw disparity, them taking 10 more free throws than us and then shooting them at 88% while we shot ours at 75, killed us. That stat right there alone is enough to change the game. Then you also look at their three-point percentage. We shot more threes than them, and they shot at a 50% clip shoot 30 and we shot 35. And then the last stat, man, is one you pointed out to me. Uh, we all seen it, but I, I'm, I'm just looking at it just like, wow. The fact that we scored 19 points in the fourth quarter and they scored 35, man, that's your ball game right there. You look at them, them three stats, tell you everything you need to know. Yeah, I know, DC. This is just not – um. The team just, you know, you can see that that going deep into the bench and what we got going on, man, it's just, you know, I, I, it's a point to get to a point. And uh, we we ultimately going to get into, you know, why isn't KLJ playing? I think uh, Kyra should be giving us something up off the bench. I think he's a guy that can add some more pointage there. And, of course, we can look over the game and say we can have a few more. We can have some better defensive play. We can hit a better uh you know, percentage from the foul line when we get there. You know, we don't have to take as many three pointers if they're not falling. You know, those are the customary smart, you know, thought processes. When you look over a loss to a a seventeen win Orlando Magic team, who was basically eleven and two at home. So I mean, there's some things you can look at, and you know, from the from a tape perspective as a coach, and say, yeah, if we clean this up, we ultimately would come away with a tough you know, a, a win against the, the Magic, but no doubt about it. The Pelicans let this one fall through their grasp. They had this game, you know, so for whatever reason. But anyway, let's get into the individual statistics on this one, man, and talk about it. We've seen Herb come back for the matchup, but the top scorer, once again, C.J. McCollum, 23 points in 36 minutes. He was 6 of 21 from the field, not looking good, 211 from downtown. But he did give you 23 points, 7 assists, 5 rebounds, and 3 steals tonight. Uh, 20 points for Big V in 28 minutes, 9 and 19 from the field. Hit a three-pointer, one or two from downtown. He finished with 20 and 10 rebounds. He had a block as well, but had five personal fouls in the matchup. Herb Jones, he basically fouled out of the game with 10 points in 19 minutes of action. They just that's, that's how they call it. Trey Murphy, in 40 minutes of action, he played more minutes than anybody tonight, finished with 18 points. On seven and nine shooting, he wasn't shooting the ball at first, and then all of a sudden, you know, he kind of came on there and started making some plays. 18 points, seven of nine shooting from the field, two or four from the outside. He did hit two or two from the charity stripe, 18 points, six boards, two assists from Trey Murphy. No points for Dyson Daniels, but a lot of hell, a hell of a lot of defense from Dyson in 31 minutes of action, which he would have gave us a little something. Would add it up. He was 0 for six from the field and uh, blanking from downtown but he did give you eight assists four rebounds he had a block a steal and he was out there playing some real ferocious defense and of course only four deep off the bench coach willie went today didn't dip into with klj 17 from jose off of the bench in 30 minutes of action four uh four rebounds four assists in the matchup he even had a steal uh in the game 14 from jackson hayes in 17 minutes of action with six rebounds and assists Larry Nance dunking on people. He had five points in 27 minutes, three rebounds, a couple of steals, and a couple of assists, and also a block in the game. And, and uh, Graham, in 13 minutes of action, only three points. He was one of four from the field, one of three from downtown, and minus 21 on the plus minus. And, of course, we didn't see uh, KLJ or anybody else. So, and then, of course, you look at what the Magic did, man. Let's take a look at a couple of their guys. And, of course, you know who the guy was, uh, Franz Wagner. 30 points led the day for the Magic. He played really well. And then, of course, 15 from Harris, who uh, was sniping at the Pelicans. And then 22 big points off the bench from Cole Anthony, who came in the game and really helped them out, too. Very efficient performance by him. He was 6-9 from the field, but got a lot of points 
uh, from the charity stripe. Eight of eight from the free throw line for Cole Anthony, and that helped carry the day. So, I mean, uh, DC, let's take a look at some of these these team statistics. I mean, uh, individuals, not much to talk about, bro. Yeah, man. I mean, uh, I only really want to mention two guys, man. I'm a, when, when they do great, I mention like four guys. I'm going to start something. When, when we don't play well, I'm only going to mention like two guys. <laughs> uh, and those two guys to be uh, Jose Alvarado and Trey Murphy. Those were the two guys watching this game that kind of kept that spark, kept that energy. I wish Trey would have turned it up more. I mean, he played 40 minutes, shot seven or nine. He got 18 points on nine shots. I would have liked to see Trey take 20, 20 shots tonight. But, you know, CJ ain't get the memo. Big V ain't get the memo that Trey had it going. But uh, no, no, uh, no, no slide at them. You know, Trey a lot of times is not as aggressive as you would like him to be. He's he's working on that, and I thought he played really well tonight. Man. Uh, 18 points, six rebounds, two assists, with two turnovers. Could have did better on the defensive side of the ball. You know, being matched up on uh, France and Bobo. You know, you know, he wasn't doing well that night. He, he was jumping at fakes and everything, but offensively. This is the trade we want to see. And Jose Alvarado, man, I mean, he only shot – he shot 6 of 15. But just his energy, man, he was all over the place, running around, doing his thing, got some assists, got a good connection with Jackson Hayes tonight, which led to uh, Jax getting 14 points, which is pretty good. Uh, Jose also got four rebounds and ended the game with 17 points, you know, with, with one turnover, acting as the backup point guard. So. That's the two bright spots to me. Jose kind of looking more like that Jose, getting closer to that guy that scored 38. And Trey Murphy continuing to take those steps to get back how we saw him playing earlier in the season. Yeah, man. Uh, these are a few bright spots. I'll give you that. You know, uh, Trey Murphy and Jose Alvarado. Um, tonight is one of those games, man, where the Pelicans, it's just, you know, you anticipate uh, them stepping it up and to the point where they have a few more defensive stands and a few things work for us here. And we had to flow for a minute and then them people just took it away from us. Just, just ran past them. And the Pelicans was almost helpless watching them take the game away from them. And like I said, I was looking at, I was like, yeah, the Pelicans currently, they're on a three game slide. Let me put something up on to the family members here. Let me show you what's going on in the NBA world. The standings wise, this is the standings currently Pelicans have slitting down. They're now in fourth place now. The last 10 games, Pelicans are three and seven on this on the three game slide. The Miami Heat is he's getting beat by the uh Dallas Mavericks right now. When I last checked, they were losing by 20 points. So next time we do see this Miami Heat, Heat team, they could possibly be coming off a loss to Dallas. So they'll be looking to rebound against the Pelicans. So about time Are we you get the Pelicans. They're gonna be upset. They're gonna be upset. So about time we get the Pelicans back, depending on how the Pelicans look. And they had this type of response to a blowout win that Miami beat the shit out of the Pelicans the other night, man. I mean, they 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 embarrassed the Pelicans, and then the Pelicans come back with a, a incomplete game. They didn't play a full well. Effort. And you really and DC, you talk about some of these other people, man. I mean, well, I know we shorthanded. We did get heard back. Uh, Najee didn't play. He had an issue. We of course we know Bi is not going to play right now. Zion's not going to play right now. So at the end of the day. We we should look at it and say the Pelicans are a deep team. We do have enough. We should have enough to beat a team by the likes of the Orlando Magic. I'm just saying this is not a contending team. They are quite talented, but they are not in the same place as the Pelicans, even without our stars. The Pelicans still should be able to beat an Orlando Magic team. They're not, they're not that team. And I know the Orlando Magic beat the Boston Celtics and all this kind of stuff, so they have the potential to step up. And sometimes that'd be because teams like the Celtics and the Pelicans and other teams that are better than these teams overlook them, and then they get yeah. punched in the face. So if you look at the Western Conference Finals, right? I mean, Western Conference standings right now, uh, the Pelicans have slid down to the fourth spot. They're 26 and 20. They're six and a half games back of Denver. Uh, and you see that's where it is. And if you look at the last 10 records, uh, the last 10 games based on the record of the top six teams, the Pelicans have the worst mark of the of the six. 
So, you know, like I said, the next matchup is the Miami Hamp, the Miami Heat team in Miami. So this could very well go up to four straight games of losing before we get back home to start it off. So January hasn't been a kind month for the Pelicans. No, it hasn't, man. But uh, you got to give them they just do about how they responded to a blowout because watching this game in the first quarter, they went out there on a mission. I'm going to be honest with you, bro. They they did exactly what Miami did to them in the first quarter, bro. But they weren't able to sustain that effort for the whole game. And ultimately, I, I think they got tired, man. I mean, that's not a good excuse, but that's what appears to have happened watching this game because the first quarter, they were up, what, 24-11 at one point. That's basically what Miami did them. You know, so I don't think it's like they weren't focused. I don't think it's um, they didn't respond well from uh, from blowout. I, I really think they just didn't. They didn't last. You know, uh, they changed they changed the rotation with Herb coming back and Najee being out. And, every time uh, they do that, they DC, they lose. Look, Every time, we, every time we do that, we throw them in there when it's supposed to just kind of line them up. They just throw them right in there. They didn't have a choice tonight, man. Who who else were they going to start, Nick? You, I don't Najee's know. not there. I don't know. I don't know. You had to put them in there, but look, I disagree with what you just said about uh, they responded better. I mean, it, it, you know, showing no, no, no. I mean, they, they ultimately got blew out, but I'm saying they came out with the right mindset. They wasn't able to sustain yeah, it. But that kind they, of they that, board, that borderlines to, you know, moral victory. I'm not – listen. You nah, got, no you moral got, victory, man. You I'm, got this, killed this by the point. Miami. You got, no moral killed, victory? you got killed by my, the Miami Heat the other night. This is a, a, a response, like a respawn game to the fact that you got – just literally got your ass kicked in your arena by the Miami Okay, Heat. well, let me, ask, let me then, ask you this. Hold on, let me finish. Then, then you come back against the, the next game against the Orlando Magic. They're not a contender. This is a win. You play well, play decent enough, well enough for three quarters, <laughs> and then you have a 35 to 19 fourth quarter implode, and then you sit up here talking about they responded better. It's still a loss no matter how you cut it, D.C., but go ahead. I no, get it. it's definitely a loss, and this is concerning. But I'm saying they're – Running out of gas, I'm burning out. Is that just on the team performance or them not focusing? Or is it something with maybe the amount of minutes we're giving guys, certain lineups, like the fact that Devontae Graham is still getting minutes and giving nothing? You know what I'm saying? Uh, Willie Herman Gomez doesn't play. Um, is it that or is it a fact of, okay, we played the right guys, we gave them in the right situations, and they just didn't execute because – what I'm saying is it's a combination of it's all a combination, them. right? They they definitely have to execute more, but I think they put themselves at a disadvantage only going four deep when a lot of times we go at least five deep, sometimes six or seven. Then you got another team doing the same thing. And you're coming off a blowout plan, you know, what, two nights ago or a night ago or whatever? Wasn't a back to back, but a game a game a day before last or whatever. I think all of those things contributed to this loss. I don't think it was a fact of the guys not uh not responding at all. Not saying that they responded well. But I think they did start that game off way better than the Miami game. They couldn't finish. And they didn't finish the Miami game either. Or the Cleveland game. So I don't think we changed anything. And if we're gonna play with this lineup of current guys, like we gotta change something around and make it work. So well, Again, that, that part I don't of think this I is a, a positive. I'm not saying this is some type of moral victory. I, I started off my conversation saying this is a disappointment, and this is concerning. Look, so, all I'm saying is, at the end of the day, is that this game was was a game that they had well in hand. They had this game, and they 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 scored 19 points in the fourth quarter, right against the Magic. So, I mean, the Magic absolutely just took it from them, you know, took it from them. That ties, usually that ties, you saying it's fatigue, could be a part of that. I can give you that. But what about what about pride? What about, you know, what about heart? 
What about determination? What about some of those things to get up off the schneid here? You know, and it's like at some point we got to do it. And of course, I do think that the Pelicans. I, I see it hard. Play. I see it hard for some guys, but other guys. You, you as a team, say, I'm saying as a team, they see a team effort. We talk. Well, to I, obviously not. Anytime we get blown right. out as a team, I can't say you showed up. Much right. Much. So that's what I'm they saying. You know, one, one or two, one or two guys showing hard. One or two guys showing hard. That ain't enough, man. They need to show right. hard as a team. <clears throat> I'm talking about you got you you got handled in the fourth quarter in the game, taken away from you by the goddamn magic. Magic is not – they're not a team contending for anything, man. They're figuring out how to play. They're learning how to play together. So this is – when you look at the schedule, you say, well, you're coming off of two losses to Cleveland, who's a good team. Miami, which has one of the best coaches in the NBA and Eric Spolstra. You run up against the Orlando Magic. This is supposed to be a win. This is a medicine game for the Pelicans. Instead, they got eight up. So in the end, of, at the end of the day, man, I'm not really. I, I still say it's 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 big time disappointment. But anyway, let's move forward, man. Let's move on because the next matchup is against that same Heat team that's that splattered the Pelicans uh, just two games ago. So they'll be facing off against this same team, and of course, the Magic. I think right now they they they've uh, did they lose tonight? I want to say they did. Yeah, they did lose. They lost to Dallas one fifteen to ninety. So the, you're going to be facing this team coming up on the 22nd. So this is going to be real interesting, man. I see exactly where this where this goes. C.J. McCollum's the top scorer for the Pelicans right now with the other guys out. He's the top assist man. Big V giving him almost 10 rebounds a game. Uh, you see Bam is the top scorer, according to this, with 10 rebounds and over 21 points a contest. He was big in the game against the Pelicans. Um, against the, the 124 to 98 win. In the Smoothie King Center, they lose to the Dallas uh, Mavericks on the road. They come home for the Pelicans, some home cooking, 14 and nine at home. They're 25 and 21 Pelicans, 26 and 29 and 14 on, on the road. So as it goes, still in all, a lot of people was hurt, hoping that Brandon Ingram could come back at some point. You know, he said he would make an appearance or he'll be coming back sometimes during the five game. That didn't happen. So how long? How long do people have to wait for Bi to get back on? I'm saying it might be a while. After the All Star break, man, you already know. That's the, him and Zion Williamson. Both of those now, guys. Zion coming through. back before the All Star break. He's uh, trying to play in the All Star game. Zion gonna come back before Bi. A game before. He gonna come back before Bi. Zion gonna come back before the All Star game. Watch. Just to, to be a part of the All Star game. Yep. Hmm. Anyway, the matchup predictor got them at almost 70% versus the Pelicans, 30.4%. And obviously, they kind of add in the fact that the Pelicans got smashed on uh, to a couple of ga games ago. And right now, the Pelicans, uh, you know, they got to find they got to find it, man. We got we got to play better as a team. And, and a lot of people are going to point at Graham with his – I mean, Graham ain't giving us nothing, man, tonight. I mean, it's just, just one person, but goddamn, bro. I mean, this is a guy – that we brought him here for scoring, and he 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 don't even know how to score anymore. I mean, it's just I don't know what to say about it, man. You know, I gonna pinpoint just him, but these last several games of watching Graham have opportunities to step up off the bench to give some help. God damn! At some point, Coach Willie got to look at it and saying I've seen some of the writers, Ali Cosell, shout out to him, wrote a really nice article uh, saying it's time to move KLJ into the lineup, man. We need to see some more KLJ, man, for real. It's at some point. You know, probably right up to the tread deadline when they move him up out of here, they got to open up a slot for KLJ to get get minutes anyway. Your first round draft pick, you're totally healthy. We need to get him in there. He's, he brings a different component. Whether or not uh, that happens is yet to be seen. But at the end of the day, we need better production from the bench. We need better defense overall with a shorthanded team. So, yeah, this is this is going to be interesting with the Pelicans, and I don't know how far along Najee Marshall, how many uh, games is Najee going to miss because he's a big part of the bench, and missing him. Well, he heard this huge. toe, so if, mm -hmm. if the eyes is the indication, uh, <laughs> oh no! Hopefully, hopefully you might want to cut the son bitch off and and, and and tape it up and let's go. <laughs> All right. So anyway, no, to be riding a lot, sure. no injuries. There you go. No injuries uh, for the Miami Heat. Ingram and Najee Marshall are listed as out. Uh, we'll see what goes on moving forward. Of course, B.I., we already covered that. 
going into this thing. So we are familiar with the Miami Heat team. It's the second matchup between this squad. This, squad. this time around, Kyle Lowry, D.C., Duncan Robinson still out. They're saying Lowry should be good to go. You'll see Tyler Hero go again. Butler, uh, Bam is there. Gabe Vincent, who played well. Uh, Aladipo, Strauss, and the rest of those guys, man, they'll be ready to go for the the second game against the Pelicans coming up on the twenty second. Let's let's cover this before we open up the lines. Well, uh, after watching last game, man, I gotta take Bam a little more serious. Bam definitely killed us. Uh, allowed us to get killed on the boards and the whole nine. So. Still can't let Jimmy Buckets do what he does against us because he damn sure can kill us. They already gonna be pissed off, but uh, we definitely got to put a em- bigger emphasis on uh, Bam at the Bayou, especially on the boards. You can't just keep giving them that mid range shot. That's not gonna work. And we gotta be prepared for that zone defense, man. As you see, my uh, the Magic tried to do the same thing against us, so. Miami hit us so bad with that zone that the Magic figured they could do it too. So uh, we definitely got to gotta tighten the reins there, bro. And we're going to have to find a way to score when JV's not in the game and when CJ McCullough's not in the game, especially if CJ's off like he was tonight. Oh, my God. You know, uh, you, you really he's really not scoring how you want him to. And when he goes out of the game, man, it's just, you know, like nothing. Uh, Jose was keeping us alive tonight. Uh, Trey definitely did his thing. But just as a team, uh, Dice Dice played amazing defensively. I saw two times, maybe three, that he ran off a of center, you know what I'm saying, making them miss and stuff. Like, it's just amazing defensive plays, but great facilitator as well. But, man, we, we got to get some points out of here. Without B.I., without Najee, without Zion, we need some points out of Dice. So, to me, that's that's the that's the X factor, man. If we get maybe 10 points out of Dice and everybody performs their roles, like we've been saying, I think that with a little more defense, knocking down our free throws, stuff like that, maybe not shooting 45% or whatever, playing decent D on the heat, we, we can win this game. But – it's definitely going to be one where we, we got to nut up, man. We got to go out there and, and basically play this game like it's a playoff game. We got to play like our life's on the line, and we got to play desperate. All I can tell you is if you're not ready to get down and dirty with the Miami Heat, you're not going to beat them. That's the bottom line. The way the, the Heat play, they scrappy, man. They die for balls. They go for everything, man. They 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 are a tough, scrappy team. And if you're not ready to do that, and that's what I said in the first matchup, it's like when we play the Miami Heat, you got to be able to, you got to get down and dirty with them guys, man. I mean, that's that's what it is. And if you're not ready for that, then uh, don't show up because they, that's what they're gonna do. It's no it's no secret how the Miami Heat play. You know, that's what they do. Jimmy buckets, he he brings it. Bam does what he do. They're a team that can shoot a little bit, and they're well coached. So at the end of the day, man, it's uh, it's gonna come down to heart. Like I've been saying, the Pelicans got to gut out these wins, man. Ain't nobody feeling bad for you that you're missing your top two scores and uh, when you keep key reserve players that've been stepping up for you. Nobody's gonna feel bad for you. You know, it's time for like if you have a deep team, the team has to the depth it will be tested. It is being tested now. So guys have to step up. I totally agree with you with you, the analysis on Dyson Daniels. Dyson Daniels is averaging what four and a half points on a season. He, he he has to give us something. You can't not score nothing. You can't score zero points in the matchup. You got to give us something. Five, you know, eight, nine. If you're playing 25 minutes, you know, you know, anyway, give us six to eight points or so. I know double your points or something. I mean, you're averaging four and a half, almost five points a game. Double your points. Give us something, man. And it's the same thing with some of the guys off the bench. The bench has to step up because most of the guys, when you got you down a few guys, guys move from off the bench into the starting lineup. They got to step up their play. Guys that's still on the bench that are buried even further, that's moving up into key reserve spots off the bench, have to elevate their game of play too. They got to step up. And scoring is a big part of it. You may mention the fact that you're seeing uh, – uh, uh, you know, uh, Jose Alvarado scored big, and Jackson yeah, Jackson Hayes did his thing. But you know, it, we just it, it's just you got it's that hard aspect too, DC. 
you, you know, you lose a lot of, of, of heart and, and, and something inside of you when you allow a collapse like that. There was a collapse in the fourth quarter tonight. Yeah. They, it was a collapse. They just, they, they just, the game, just the, the momentum, they, the Orlando just, just ran over them. They just ran over them, took the game from them. Pelicans dipped their head and tried going to Miami. And Miami, after losing tonight, they're not going to relent on the Pelicans. The Pelicans very well could be leaving this two game road trip coming back to the Smoothie King Center for the three game stand they're going to have down four straight losses and sitting up at 26 and 21. So at some point, something has to change, whether it was a shakeup in the back of the, the lineup or an addition. Maybe you're pulling somebody from the G League to help out. I don't know what you got to do, but you got to do something. That's that's clear and obvious right here. Thank you, brother. Tommy says, do you guys think we need more creators who can get their own shot? I feel like we have a lot of guys that depend on CJ or BI or Zion to get them a shot. We need our stars back. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, we we, need our stars back. we wouldn't you, be saying that if, uh, if we had um, – CJ, Zion, and B.I. Obviously, we wouldn't say that, but I think one more creator couldn't hurt. With, oh, I, already, I really feel idea. like we have them on the team already, but guys still are uh, developing. So a uh, guy like Kyra, to me, would be a creator. Uh, Dice, I think in the future, would obviously be a creator. You know, uh, so you, you got two guys right there. We can't laugh at... Uh, and Najee's creation abilities as well. You know, uh, he's a pretty decent creator. But it ain't like he about to just get his own shot off the dribble all the time. But the way he's been driving has been very impressive. So wouldn't be bad at one more, you know, because of where we are right now. But if we didn't and we still had Pat and one of these guys took the next step as a creator, I think we would have what you want. But ultimately, as of right now, Hey, I can't be mad at that, man. We need something. We need some type of spark. We can't keep going on the way we're going on. We're going to keep getting the same results. Yeah, you got to see a landslide happening. Even though it's slow moving, it's still, you know, I still see something sliding in the wrong direction. You take a look at the last 10 games. The Pelicans won three of the last uh, 10 games. They're three and seven. You know, they done slid down the fourth in the in the Western Conference. So at some point, they might have to make a move, whether that's bringing up a guy from the G League or sitting somebody down. Or, I mean, of course, we're getting close to the trade deadline. So eventually you might be looking at a trade to bring somebody in to help out as well. So at some point, something has to happen because I don't know what's going on with B.I. We were thinking like before the five game road stand that eventually B.I. would. He can't be out beyond that. But guess what? Not only did we complete the five game road trip, but then we came home, then went. And we're about to finish the two-game road trip we currently on. And still, I don't think the prospects for him coming back for the next seven days is even, is even a real thing. So, you know, that 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 toe is slow slow healing or whatever's going on with that toe. The Pelicans going to have to make a move outside the building to kind of help out, to kind of steady those reserves and bring some guys in there, especially when we be seeing guys like Najee Marshall. been playing a lot of heavy-handed minutes, big heavy-handed minutes, and been giving us good production, but you boy, too, man. we really missed him tonight, man. We, we well, I mean, Najee was really averaging Najee 18 tonight. points a game right. over these mm-hmm. over the stretch, you Bro, know. We uh, missed him bad tonight. We had no really Zion nobody to fill in for him. Right. We, we well, you know, there was nobody to fill in for what Najee Marshall did. We missed the hell out of him, man. So I would definitely agree with you. We need we definitely need to uh do something here, bro, to kind of stop this slow motion slide the Pelicans currently on. So Oh yeah, Wu says he missed twenty seven straight games. Is that is that how many games he lo- he done missed that many yeah, games? Yeah, I've been gone for a while. Man. Wow, man, since Black Friday, right? So that's been like a while, it's damn twenty seven games he's missed already. I can understand why some of these reports are talking about people are frustrated with Bi and they're putting it like on him to come back. But you know, if if he's not ready, you can't force him back. I would rather him stay out. Then come back and then play for a few games, then aggravate whatever's going on, and then he go back out for another month and a half or whatever. So if he ain't ready to go, I'm not gonna force him. You know, you're just gonna have to either force this team to do something else, play harder, or you got to mix lineups. There's options that we can do. We just have to. They have to just. They're gonna have to execute a few things. Whether that's trading Graham and finding somebody that can come in and help, like like brother Thomas said, get a shot. 
or a guy that could play some defense. We we talked about it on one of the, the flash reports about OG. And then, of course, we talked about Gary Trent Jr. Those are the options they're throwing at. They have some out, stuff out there with uh, your boy, uh, what's his name? Uh, he used to play for the Jazz and the Pistons. But oh, was, Bogdanovich? Nah, well, Bogdanovich and then what's his name? Alec, whatever. But, you know, it's what's, what's interesting is that they're going to have to make a move to do something, man. Whether or not that's bringing a G League player here or what. I mean, something got to give, man. Something got to give to stop this slide. All right, Aramis says, uh, uh, I need less on court videos of B.I. shooting shots and more him out there on the court. And yes, 27 straight. Amazing. Thank you, uh, Aramis, for that uh, super chat, my friend. Appreciate you. Much love, bro. Burks, there you go. Thank you. That's what I was thinking about. Alec Burks. I seen a potential trade uh, online about him. Brother Judah says we got to stop with Graham. I know they're trying to push this trade value. It's hurting us, indeed, bro. They, they, <laughs> it giving them trade and plan them to trade them. You know, this this is what this is. So, and I, DC came up with this this commentary. He told me some time ago, and I'm starting to believe DC on this. When he made mention of the fact that he says, Q, you know what? I think he's playing bad to avoid to lower his value so he doesn't get traded. <laughs> yeah. I said, you know what, DC? Uh, that might not be the that that might not be far from the truth, bro, because Graham looks like absolute crap out there. I mean, literally, his defense is better, but he's not brung here for the defense, man. I mean, DC, how are you averaging – now, this guy is supposed to be – and I won't put it all on Graham, but Graham is going to get it because he's making a lot of money coming up off the bench. He's making $11 million off the bench. And D.C., he's averaging five points a game. Dyson Daniels, who's not even a scorer, is giving you four and a half. You heard what I just said? Dyson <laughs> Daniels scored zero <laughs> points tonight. Don't even attempt to score. He plays defense and facilitates. He's not a scorer. He knows that's not a big part of his game. He's averaging four and a half points per game, and Graham, who's a scorer, is giving you five a game. He had six tonight, yeah, I want to say. You know, that's bad, especially when you're making 11 million. So, yeah, the, the, the microscope is, is, is straight pointed right at Graham. He has to be able to give some points. Man, it's just amazing how bad this guy. Let me put the statistics up on this guy. Oh, Let's come on, man. We got to do this again, bro. I mean, this is amazing <laughs> to me. DC, look, look, and, and look, his. His the let the in 2019 the man averaged 18 points a game, you know, in 53 starts. The following year in 2021, 15 points a game, right? In 44 starts, in 21, 22, first year with the Pelicans, the man averaged 12 points a game. In 63 starts, in 45 games, no starts for the Pelicans, he's averaging 15 points a contest, and he averaging five points a game. And then you will see Graham literally pass up shots. He'll he'll jump in the air, trap himself, then turn around to try to find somebody behind the three point line. I've seen him do that several times, like he avoiding shooting the ball because he know that the, he he listen to everything with the flock saying, man. It's how it, five points a game for a guy that's averaging he averaging fifteen points a game. I don't expect him to have twenty points a contest, but at the same time, man, you should be able to give us better than five points, bro. At least what? Let's get up toward 10 points. Maybe 10 points a game wouldn't be so bad. We would have won a few games had he did that. But five points DC and shooting 35.2% from the field. I mean, epically horrible. And then he's shooting 30 with 30. His numbers, his numbers is 35.2. He's shooting 35% from the field and 33% from downtown. And 75 and a half percent from the charity stripe, DC. And we were just shooting 40 percent from downtown, not long ago, and what 46, 47 percent from the field at some point. Put a dead and all that. <laughs> I, I, it's just it's amazing, man. At some point, if the Pelicans don't make a trade and trade Devontae Graham, which I expect them to make a trade to eventually move Graham out of here and find some help. But that's what this team needs right now. With all these, with, with what's going on, the Pelicans definitely can use some help here, and Graham is the key to it. You know, so uh, we'll see. Uh, Alexis, uh, hold on, is uh, okay. Uh, hold on here. Alexis says, uh, "Q, what do you think of our lineup at the start of the fourth? At the start of the fourth, very curious lineup. The lineup that he brought in. Let me refresh my memory, Alexa, about the lineup at the start of the fourth because." 
I when it, when it, when I was watching the game and I was looking at the game and all I knew is I just kept putting my head down. I was watching it fall and I was like, oh my goodness. I kept turning away and I watching what Orlando was doing. So I don't remember exactly what the lineup was at the top of the fourth. Remind me, y'all. Remind me. I'm sorry. You know, it's crazy. But I know what, uh, yeah, I don't I don't remember the lineup at the top of the fourth even, man. Um, yeah, it, Thomas I was really was, disappointed with the Pels in the fourth quarter. I almost felt like they didn't do anything. What, like right, that. right. Alexa, whatever the lineup was at the, the top of the fourth, don't ever do that again. Because we, because <laughs> we fell out that play. thirty-five to nineteen is horrible, man. But I don't remember the lineup. But I remember looking. Uh, uh, who I I, I forget. I forget. Uh, crazy. Uh, Thomas said, "Yeah, I'm sorry. I, a lot of this sudden just phased it out of my mind. I'm sorry, y'all. Crazy thing we've all. Uh, thank you, Thomas. He says, crazy thing we've all seen Graham play, and we must have gotten him his twin brother great because this guy is not him. Yeah, I, I man." Graham is first of all, you would think that with a guy like Devontae Graham, I mean, you would think about his confidence. He was a very confident player coming from Charlotte. He's a very confident player, very confident. Remember, he would go and many times he, he was scoring in in, in uh, combination with Scary Terry, who can light you up. Devontae Graham was out there playing very confident basketball. And that was a big part of his game. Where is that confidence now? I mean, when he got beat out by Jose Alvarado, an undrafted guy, and his mama said, you better step your game up because this guy going to take your job. And Jose comes in here. He beats Graham. Mama was a prophet, huh? Well, she's the prophet. But I thought I'd say, man, Graham can't take that sitting down. He, Jose is going to push him to become a better player, and Graham's going to rediscover his offensive edge. And you're going to see him come up out of this thing. You're going to come out and shoot, shoot himself out of this slump. You're going to rise up. No, he didn't. What he did was he said, you know what? Jose is better than me. We're going to keep let him keep going. And then I'm going to just settle right here with this big bag of this $11 million right here. I'm going to sit nice and comfortable right here off the bench and be the third guard coming into Adelaide. He didn't really. Damn, you really think that's what he said, bro? Bro, it's in his play. It's in his play. He didn't step up. He didn't challenge Grand Theft Alvarado for nothing. His defense got a little better. But his offensive game, he's still in a season-long slump. Every now and again, he'll sprinkle some action on you when you don't need him. But in games like this, when you need him to step up and play, he's not. He's absent, noticeably absent. And people are going to keep giving Graham smoke because he's making too much money to only be giving you five points a game and Dyson freaking Daniels so don't even try to score averaging four and a half. Man, this is unbearable. They have to trade this guy, man. You know, just to just to get rid of the bad contract because his play has turned the contract into garbage. He got it. You got to ship him out of here for a more credible player, a person or open up minutes for KLG or bring in another player that can shoot and play defense. Man, they got to They got to move him, bro. No fans and butts about it. But Graham could really have helped us out tonight. All right. So anyway, uh, Alexa says that it was Elvarado, Dyson Daniels. Uh, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Graham. I remember Herb and and Valachunas. Yeah, the thing about what like with like Dyson should have Dyson yeah, yeah Don Graham no, because Graham's not really giving us anything. He ain't giving us anything. And Dyson playing defense, I can respect Dyson's mind, but you can't. I can't justify how many minutes did Dyson Daniels play tonight. Play like what twenty eight minutes or something like that. Thirty one minutes. Yeah, you can't play thirty one minutes, Dyson. Not school. <laughs> and not give any. I mean, and be up there on the stat line with a zero. Bro, that's that's not going to work. That's like what we said about Trey Murphy. When Trey played like 30, 28, 25, you scored, you played 25, 30 minutes. You can't be scoring eight points and nine points, and you're the best shooter on the team. You can't do that. You got to step up. He is better than Trey, though, uh, was in his rookie year. At this point, in Trey's rookie year, he wasn't even playing. I mean, that's true, DC, but that don't help us right now. I mean, in, in the current sense, I'm saying in terms of the game tonight, he didn't give you anything – from an offensive standpoint, which you could have used, you you could have used his points. You could have used. You could have, but we 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 haven't put him in position to be able to have to depend on. So you know, you can't get a layup. You're right, but I I don't even think he's been prepared for that because that, that's layup? never been his role. Um, he's kind of been thrust into the role he's in right now for us needing him to score because we're doing so bad. Yeah, I don't like that. But, uh, you you see you you can see once he get out run you get him in the open court he can do some things it's just almost like he uh 
he's a point guard by nature, man. So he's just naturally deferring to his teammates. Uh, he's going to have to be a little more aggressive. And um, I think that that'll have to come with kind of some game plan from the coaches on getting him more involved offensively. Took six shots tonight. I mean, we'd have had games where Dice took three shots and four shots. So six is a step in the right direction. I mean, how many games has he taken six shots, even though he didn't score no points? I hear you, DC. Still took six shots. So it's like, I agree, and he got to do better. But I I think it's uh, more of a thing where it's it's coming or it will happen. Could happen as soon as this game against Miami because we need him, man. And uh, it's going to get to the point where nobody's really, you know, considering him. They obviously, they're trying to run him off the line a little bit. So the fact that he's been pretty efficient from three at times, I think teams realize that. But other than that, they really don't care what Dice does. Well, only thing I can say, I'm looking at, you know, from a game standpoint, from a seasonal standpoint, Dyson Daniels averages four and a half points per game since he's been playing. Graham, who's a natural scorer, is a veteran that's signed to this team, got a nice contract, is averaging five points per game. That don't even make any sense. I mean, he averaged 12, 12 points a game last year and it cut damn near less than cut his average dc now we know he ain't start we know he ain't started yet and started uh for the pelicans but he still get decent minutes for the pelicans right now at 15 uh minutes per game and i'm like at some point man you know jose done stole all his minutes his his confidence ain't there and he's gonna and, and listen he's gonna stay where he is in terms of like with the pelicans in terms of his confidence because he just he, he feels like he's cool right there like it, you don't have the pressure that he had last year to show up and score because that's what they gave him the money for, to be a scorer, to help out. And he's totally not that. So when we got Dyson Daniels and these guys, like, okay, Graham will settle in on the bench and he will produce off the bench. He will give us the scoring with less pressure. He will perform better against guys in the second year. Where were we, bro? Bob, that, yeah, you, but every which way we tried to approach. Remember this? Because I remember all of that. Okay, he's not a starting level guard. Okay, he's a six man. That's what the talking point was. So he ends up on the bench. It's like, okay, yeah. And then you even said several times during the show, and I agree with you. You said to me, you said, Q, you know what? He's going to settle in on the bench, man. He'll be a six man or he'll be a guy coming up off the bench. And ultimately, he should play a lot better because he'll be playing against nine starters most, you know, most games. So he should have better production against those guys. But guess what? That didn't happen. So not only did Jose Alvarado take his job and, you know, Jose played 30 you know, minutes tonight and gave him 17 points, which is, you know, good numbers. Graham play, you know, Graham settles in. He's confident. In, well, I ain't going to say he's confident, but he's cool. He's comfortable. He's complacent in this role off the bench where it is. Only problem is he ain't doing nothing. He ain't scoring anything. Four and five points here or there. And every two or ten, five or six games down the line, he'll hit you with 13, maybe 15, maybe 16, four and few in between. So it's time, man. It's time for this guy to go, man. And uh, and it's getting close, man. We're getting close to that trade deadline. So, yeah, ain't no doubt about it, man. He playing, he's just not playing well enough to even make, make an argument for him to be a part of this team. Like DC was saying, man, we don't have to trade him right away. We can hold on to him like hell we need to. We need to get this guy up out of here, open up time for KLJ. I'd be even cool for C. Brian getting some minutes, man. You know, what's up? Where's C. Brian at? Can we bring C. Brian on the team? hurt. Oh, is he hurt? I don't know, man. We, let's we let's dig. We got a pretty decent G League team. Can't we dig on the G League team? Pull some of them guys and bring somebody here that can help out, man. I mean, something you're gonna have to do something to stop the slide. The Pelicans are currently home. Yeah, I know the creative mindset. See, Brian's a hooper. Oh, yeah, indeed, I, I agree. All right, Lex is saying uh, Trigger shouldn't run off the line every single time he needs to pull up. And maybe just maybe he'll get fouled and shoot the three. And, yeah, that's something he got a lot. I, I watch him do that a lot, Lexa. Great commentary right there. Uh, Stephanie, what's up, baby? Says, what do y'all think Willie really be thinking when they lose against teams like this, knowing they should have won this game because he really don't show us emotion? When you watch the interview tonight, you watching Willie's face, they asking these questions. And Willie's usually cool. He's a guy that answers questions. He's a respectable guy. But you can see some of some of his answers was really like, I ain't going to say sharp, but like a lot sharper. Disappointed. Yeah, than what they usually is. And yeah, disappointed and fr- it's a bit of frustration there too, I sense. 
It got to be because you want to see how, like I said, you want to see how your team responds after these people got the absolute shit beat out of them against the Miami Heat. He stumped them eight ways from Tuesday, beat them in all kind of ways. And then, then you want to see how your team responds because he makes the adjustments. Willie's good at the adjustments. He coaches up the team, brings them up. I'm calling you up. That's his verbiage. And then the next game, you have a three, you have three quarters of decent play against a nine playoff bound Orlando Magic team that's just learning how to play, that's putting it together. And then you go into the fourth quarter and you get demolished 35 to 19 and ultimately lose the game by 13 by double digits. That definitely pisses. That would piss me off. I know that for certain. So, you know, you know, I see visible frustration on Willie when I was looking at him during that interview. Brother Thomas says, what do you guys, uh, he says, what do you guys notice Coach Green and the team goes away from JV a lot of nights when he's just pushing, uh, punishing his matchup? We just, he says, and we adjust to other teams' small lineup instead of making teams adjust to JV. I, I think some of that's on, uh, you, on JV. Obviously, obviously, Brother Thomas, I see them get him the ball and he'll do his little pump fake thing. He should have shot the three. Or he'll get the ball in the paint sometimes and kick it out. Other times they don't. Um, they don't get it. You know what I'm saying? But it's really, it's really on JV a lot of times. I think with that. But um, I don't think it's a Willie Green issue. As far as that, it's, it's teammates and, and JV. They're not finding them. They're not. Um, they're not executing. Like it's almost as if. He's still playing like B.I. and Zion is out there at times. Tonight, took 19 shots, just didn't go his way. You know, I can't really say they went away from him tonight and it was super successful. Just didn't work out tonight. But there was other games, I know what you're referring to, where JV might have been 7 or 9, like how we see Trey. And yeah, they just go away from him, man. It makes absolutely no sense. Yeah, man, this I, I don't know what to say, man, about that, man. Um, you know, sometimes you see the foul trouble occurs, like you've seen tonight. Herb files out, you know, Big V had five personal files tonight as well. And they call they, they, the two guys that get a lot of those calls most of the nights against uh, when the referees get up in it. And it's the same thing with most. Well, the majority of the nights they give Herb Jones a lot of files they give Valachunas a lot of files. And it just be on simple like screens where he'd be positioned. I'm like, what the hell you want him to do? So it's hard gauging how these people are calling these games because it's very weird. It's not, it's it's so strange to see how they operate. Like the guy just runs into Valachunas and falls, do this Hollywood fallback thing, and the, the dumbass referee blows the whistle. He's like, man, what do you want me to do? I'm a big freaking guy, and this little guy runs into me. What am I supposed to do? You know, so I, I don't know what he's supposed to do. You know, I, I I don't I don't know, man. It's very strange, man. But you're right. Uh, Valachunas, I mean, option A and option B. When the Pelicans are down B.I. and Zion, the uh, the, the the number one option and second option becomes C.J. McCollum and Valachunas. It's, bet- it's their team. They're going to have to get the rest of the guys involved to step up and play. And Najee Marshall, he stepped up and handled his business. You see uh, Jose Alvarado, he's stepping up and handling this business. But it's a full team effort. Guys got to step up and produce. Now, Larry Nance, since he had that shoulder issue, Larry's been doing his regular thing with his defense and stuff like that. But notice his points ain't been up there. You know, Larry, you usually get you close to a double-double or get you close to a double-double. You just hadn't been seeing Larry's offensive game. You know what I'm saying, family? Since that shoulder issue, since he came back from injury, that offensive aspect of, of of Larry's game hasn't been there, and I noticed that, you know, and that and that's when you got to get guys off the bench to step up. And just like we said, we only went four deep off the bench tonight. I don't know why we didn't get KLJ in there. I think he would have helped out. But at some point, man, it is what it is. The Pelicans they're gonna have to get some answers quick, man, for real. January, and we knew that going into January, family, that January wasn't gonna be a kind month to the Pelicans. To be honest with you, we know it wasn't gonna be a kind month. When they rolled out them five straight road games, I was like, oh, yeah, this is going to be interesting, to be honest with you. And, and it is, you know, so right now, three and seven over the last 10. Shout out to the fan. Appreciate y'all being with us, man. We're going to be rolling this thing up until 
Uh, hold on. We had the link in the top of the chat. We'll be going up to 1030 before we cut off. Uh, if you want to pop in, pop in quick, fam. We're getting close to the cutoff time. So anyway, we're going to bring in DJ uh, from the state of the Pelicans and get his thought on the game. DJ, welcome to the stream, bro. Yeah, we're trying to have that. We're good. Good, bro. How you doing? Uh, okay. Who's going on, DC? I heard you. Um, okay. Here's my thing. This is a good game and a bad game. When, when I say it was a good game, we got to see... Uh, Mayo and Dwyer, okay. please stand behind the yellow line while the bus is moving. Uh, uh, the way I said it is we get, uh, I know y'all looked at trades and all that, so we got to see uh, Mumba, I mean, uh, yeah, Mumbamba, and uh, pretty much whatever they're giving up for Mumbamba, like Jaden Suggs, and whatever case may be. To scout them, this was a good game, because Jackson, um, he kind of questioned. Man, two threes. And he could have pump faked and drive or drove and probably either hit, hit, hit the mid range or, you know, got the foul or went to the free throw line. I, I don't like Jackson uh, shooting that off, period. Um, as well as, uh, why coach not playing Willie Hunter Gomez and Kyle? I know Deion Chupon, he in the, the Birmingham, he's on the Birmingham team. I understand that. But we could use him in this game too. Uh, another thing, uh, we got to do better at turnovers. I mean, this was better than last game, but uh, yeah, we, we got to do better at turnovers. The, the ticket to, I mean, nah, the only reason why they won is because they went to the free throw line damn near 30 times, at least 30. Uh, that, that, that's the only thing I can see they win this game because they went to the free throw line. And half the time they hit, uh, they, they made the and one or, you know, the three point play. Stop. Then another thing is, uh, we couldn't close out in the corner. Jalen Suggs, uh, or the other guy that they got over there, uh, he went off in the corner. It, it was just getting double time points in the corner. Like, right? I mean, like, that's another thing. Uh, I mean, I'm giving the game ball to either Jonas or, uh, or CJ. Trey, Trey Murphy, he questioned, but, I mean, even though he scored 18 tonight or 17 tonight, but, I mean, like I said, I got I got three game balls, and all of them going to CJ, uh, her, I mean, not her. Uh, JV and Trey. That's that's just my take on. We got you better turnover. Uh, they have to go through Jonas. It was a mismatch, and you know if you got shooters out there, pass to your shooters because they're gonna double team. Uh, well, not my team, not double team, but yeah, yeah you gotta go through Jonas. There's like I believe second, second or third quarter they was going through Jonas. When the shit was working, keep it going. Then in the third quarter, I believe uh, I believe Trey Murphy got it going. Trey Murphy and uh, Jose got it going. Like, and then go back to Yonder. Like, I mean, when they stopped Trey Murphy, go back to Yonder. It was a mismatch. Now, of course, we had a mismatch because we couldn't check Bull Bull. But other than that, I don't see too much we could have won. I mean, like I said, we got Zion, Bi, and Dajon But other than that, I mean, it's pretty much a dub for me if we had them, them guys on the floor. All right, DJ. Uh, appreciate Stop you, bro. Request. All right, back here. All right, well, that's the best brother. That's uh, the brother chiming in there. Appreciate DJ. Stay where you at, DJ. We're going to bring uh, Brother Moles in. Brother Moles, welcome to the stream, bro. How you doing? Good, good. What's going on, fellas? Good, my brother. How you feeling? Right, Moles. <laughs> Hold on. Let me get out the light, bro. I'm doing laundry at the same time. Uh, look, the bottom line is, man, you know, I like Dyson Daniels. I like all those guys, man. But 
we we got too many guys that ain't bucket getters, man. The the bottom line, the reason why we're losing these games is because we don't have any bucket getters with our with our uh, role players. If, you know, you take a guy like uh, Trey Murphy. Yeah, he can shoot the catch, the catch and shoot jump if you get it. And then with that old raggedy handle he got, he can sometimes get to the uh, to the goal if if you you know you run him and he, and he beat you to the goal and he can dunk the ball. But man, he's not really a guy that can set people up and you know just just go get buckets in the mid range and stuff like that. If you look at guys like Terrence Ross and and I don't know why people don't like Bo Bo man, Bo Bo got game. You know, he could get – I mean, them guys could get buckets. We don't have any bucket yeah. getters outside our top three guys. You know, that's our problem. We need we need bucket getters. When we start, when we drafting guys, but they all look the same way. You can – like you got Herb, right? I understand Herb's the second-round draft pick, so you take what you can out the second round. But you got to start taking first-round guys, if you know, who can just score. Man, you ain't got to defend anybody. Go in there for five or six minutes and go get me eight points. That's what we don't have. You guys there? Yeah, Mose, we listen. Yeah, we yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I totally that, agree, Mose. Uh, and and I was high easy. on Bobo, man. I wanted us to draft him on trash. Man, Bobo, <laughs> man, Bobo, they, man. Look, they not being right with Bobo, man, because Bobo needs some big minutes. And then you look at what what uh, what's it's, it's his man? attitude. I think uh, Mose, he, you know, you know who his daddy was. I think he came in there with a little bit of that entitlement. They tried to break him. You know what I'm saying? He don't look like he care about defense a whole lot. They probably want him on that more on that end. I kind of think that's the deal with him. But we all know Bobo Bo can score. But look at Cole he, Anthony. He can handle Cole that Anthony rock. He came off the bench, man, trying to get buckets. We don't have a guy like that, man. And that's that's the issue yeah. when we when we start reconstructing our roster, man. I know we got team chemistry. All them guys like each other and all that kind of stuff, man. That boy look like DC. Man, I need – yeah, he do. But I need buckets, bro. I need some uh, – give me some guys who don't like each other that can get some buckets and I'm good, man. All that old kumbaya stuff, man, this the this, this professional basketball. We don't have to ride home together. We don't have to hang out. But when we get to that basketball court, you know, we got a job to do. That's, you know, that's the thing that we're missing, man. And then when, like, the other day, I know I typed in, 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 in the comments down there, man. Man, I hit my big toe the other day, boy, and I'm telling you, it hurt like nobody's business, right? <laughs> still about two or three days man i was good and i'm 57 years old man bi 24 you know what i'm saying <laughs> man it's man look man you look young people heal faster than older people do right i got a little kids i'm working out with my son man the kid worked out he hurt his arm right he, he kind of like uh his, his his labrum and stuff man it was swollen he went to the doctor took images and all that man you know like a couple days later man that kid was back working out throwing the ball and doing all that stuff again man i don't know if, if 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 Brandon Ingram got some kind of uh, uh what, what what's Benjamin Button disease where he getting he's getting <laughs> he's getting old as he, he age or whatever or younger I, man something ain't right with that dude bro you know he man you got to play ball man it's some some things you got to play through you got to play through some things man and, and get there you know I know we we want to be ready for uh, for the the postseason but at this point if we keep dropping like this. Man, you're going to end up with a bad draw. I mean, we're a better home team, so, you know, the home court advantage will help us. You know, we're not Golden State. Golden State is the type of team with veteran players that can go to, go into a series without home court advantage. But, man, they got they got some guys that can get that can get them buckets, and they got veterans, man. You don't want to see them like that. You know, so I don't know, man. They, they just got to figure out. Now, if I was going to make a trade, now what my man was on there last week talking about, Oh, McDonaldbeach can't play no defense. Uh, you know, you gotta have you gotta have defense. Boy, in the NBA, you need a oh, you talking about black. <laughs> yeah. In uh, in the NBA, you need some bucket getters sometimes because what's happening with the Pelicans, even if they get a stop, they go back down the other and they can't get and can't get buckets, man. At some point, my defense gotta be my offense. You know what? I'm coming down. I'm gonna score five or six times in a row. You better be able to score five or six times in a row because if you don't, I'm gonna stretch my lead out. So, you know, that's 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 the issue, man. That's the issue. And I'm tired, so, so, but I watch these games. So who we should get, Most you, you you think we should get uh Adenovi like a lot of people talk about or you no, you, because you I, don't, I, I don't I don't I don't think he no no serious bucket getter, man. We need a bucket getter. You know what you know, OG is a is a is kind of a version of uh Herb, but he he, he you know he scored a little bit better than Herb, but 
you know, he's just like the rest of those guys. He's not a guy who, man, you, I mean, you guys remember old school basketball when you had some people like Vinnie Johnson, the microwave with Detroit back in the day. Man, he's just coming off the bench. You know what he's coming to do? Man, he's coming to get buckets. Uh, Jordan Clarkson. Man, they just come and get buckets. Nobody cares about their defense. And when I put you in there for a six-minute run and you can get me 10 points sometime or 12 points sometime, man, that's what you need. You know, we we don't have bucket getters. And then, you know, not having Najee last night, I mean tonight, that that hurt us too because Najee, uh, he, he, you know, he, he's more of a bucket getter than the rest of those guys that can create offense. The rest of those guys, man, Dyson Daniels, bro, look. Dude, you you in the NBA, bro. You you can't run up in there, jump in there, and trying to pass the ball to somebody two feet from you. Dude, you six seven, <laughs> six eight. You got to score the basketball right there, man. Sometimes you look like a bitty basketball player. I'm like, man, what the hell is dude doing? You know, you know, be a you know, be aggressive offensively, man, and try and get points. We need points. And then CJ come in. Now the problem with CJ because CJ. He's a guy who wanted to just go one on one the whole game anyway. So you put him on the court with these guys who can't score, and then sometimes we have bad possessions because he come and dominate the ball the whole time and take a crazy shot running up in there the lane. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So that's that's another thing, man. That's a problem, man. So you know we got to get those guys back, or they got to make a move. Now let me let's talk about moves, bro. If if you don't want to if you don't want to do Bogdanovich, you know, like I heard Q say because I read that same article about Alex Burke. He's a guy that'll come off the bench and get buckets. You know, you just need him to come in there for a six-minute stretch, you know what I'm saying, a five-minute stretch, and possibly get you six points or eight points in that stretch. That's all you need, you know, and then he's not hard on the salary cap because the one thing that we got to watch with the Pelicans is is the luxury tax, right, because they're not going to pay the luxury tax, you know, uh, you know, in a small market. You know, the first the first year you're in the luxury the luxury tax, I think you dollar for dollar. But if you come back again, man, that's, that thing starts to multiply on you. And I know they're not going to spend money like that. And you have to remember, B.I. going to be due for another contract in, 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 in a couple of years. Zion's going to come on the books for some real money uh, next year. You know, so you're going to get in a situation where if you bring in too much money, it's going to put you in a luxury tax. And, and then you better be winning championships at that point. Right. So that's the other issue we got to look at. So I would be looking at, man, I like Bogdanovich. And if you said, you know, everybody said, okay, we're going to send out Devontae Graham, who just, man, my son called him garbage. I said, man, garbage is too good a name to use for him, bro. You, you give me garbage a bad name. But, you know, do you want Devontae Graham? He, he's not on the expiring contract. You got to pay him the 11 this year. And then I think he's partially guaranteed for the next year. You, you want the first round team. pick though, Bogues. But I, if I know you want that. <laughs> well, I'm gonna give you a first round draft pick, but if I give you Milwaukee draft draft pick, as long as Giannis is still living and playing basketball, that's gonna be a, a late, a late uh a first round draft pick. Now you gotta you get can, her one season. Well, you can throw you can throw uh Jackson in there and because Jackson is a guy that you might want to take a fly on, you know, and you know, because he's got some upside, but I to me Man, Jackson is a track athlete. He should be somewhere over there doing high jumping and all that kind of stuff, man. He ain't no basketball player, man. He's a track athlete. So <laughs> that's what he should be doing, long jumping or high jumping or something like that. Because, dude, how could you play basketball for four years in the NBA and still be the same guy? I mean, I don't know what kind of job you guys do, but I, I guarantee you, you better on that job now than you were, you know, four years ago. Man, that guy's still the same dude. You know, he, he one of those kids when I went to school who stayed in the same class all day long. You know what I'm saying? He didn't, he didn't, he didn't switch, switch classes. classes huh? Yeah, he didn't switch classes, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because he, you know, he's not developing. So that's the issue you have with, with him. Uh, I think I think Kyra should be getting some minutes right now. If you can't get Kyra minutes now, bro, you you, you being stupid, you being stupid, Willie. You being stupid by not giving him an opportunity to play because you got to see what you have. Man, I love Ho I love Jose. Jose. Oh. But Jose, those guys are role players, man. You need you need to give him an opportunity to play. Uh you need to give him an uh so are we saying or do you guys think Dyson Daniels is just better than KLJ? I think he is. You think he is? No. I yeah, think I, think I, I don't I, I think make, uh, make your case. Make your case. I make think it's it, 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 oh KLJ possesses something that Dyson never has. You know, uh, 
KLJ as a scorer, I think has the potential to be a, a better scorer than Dice can ever be. But Dice has vision and defense that KLJ will never have. So, like, when you try to balance it out, to me, it's difficult to say who's better. But I think more or less what I really see is I think they're a perfect combination of guys that we could play together because mm-hmm. they complement each other so well. But can you have a lineup of with with Dyson and Herb on the court at the same time? It's mm-hmm. kind of unnecessary. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, well, they do. They're, like, I mean, they're they kind of similar. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I wouldn't want one of them to be out there all the time. So when I take one out, I can put the other one in. Now, I would like to play with both of them because if I'm a shooter, because you know what? They can't shoot, so I'm going to get all the shots I want. You can get but, a bunch of bricks out there. Yeah, but, but you, you you create a situation you where... put both of them with Liana <laughs> behind and whoever else, I think that'll definitely work. They're going to be looking at CJ the whole time on the court. But no, they, they don't they don't help Zion because, you know, man, you know what I'm going to do? Bro, Herb and, and Dyson can get all the shots they want. I'm close. I'm Dice, 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 Dice hit wide open threes, though, most. Dude, I'm close, but not consistently because I'm closing on, I'm closing on him short. He's going to have to show me that he's going to make hit, He ain't hit no wide open shots tonight. That's for certain. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I can't say nothing about tonight. You was <laughs> you take a guy he was like, for six. DC. Man, you take a guy like Jordan Poole, man, he's Who's a straight saying? bucket getter. You know what I'm saying? Them, them yeah. boys. All right, let me see who I think I, we could get. I think we should get Pascal Siakam. Nah, how, how he's going to play? I mean, how you For what? Like? For what? <laughs> I heard you, they just, I heard that the, the, uh, the rap I looked at today that the Raptors, uh, they had um leaked leaked what they're trying to get for each of, each of their players, and they said they're looking for three players and three picks. Let me tell you something. So who, ain't but who one giving up to get Siakam? No, they ain't but one player that's what they that said they're looking for right now. That's what they said they're looking for. And they and then, and then well, I was watching because they had like an insider that came out and he, it was saying they put uh, us uh, the um, that's thirty five mil though. That's no, we, it? Uh, we trying to get a Nobi, uh, Garrett Trent Jr. What the money guys? ain't gonna work? Yeah, to the, money, the money, the money, the money. Thirty five. I mean, mil, y'all listen, yeah, I don't know if y'all listen to Jake Madison, but he broke it down and then he, he said we would we like he broke down the thing and he said that we would be right at the right at the we would be over the limit obviously, but we would still be able to work it out with if we get some cheap players like we just have. Why, like, why, why would David Griffin do that? Because well, if you do that, guy, I would want it. You anyway. just like you basically got to win a championship this year, and that's what we're going to. That's, at least that's what I was saying. We going straight to the finals. If I'm gonna sell out, unless they ain't going to the finals, sell out for right now, and that, and that's and that, that's Shea Gilders Alexander. If I'm gonna move some of them picks, that's the guy I'm going to get. If if, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna swing big, man, I'm gonna swing big. I mean, I mean, see, Occam is okay, but I just don't see how he fit. I we, think that he fits perfectly because when we go small ball, that's the perfect center we need. Him, imagine him. I see, uh, I can make him sit up, bro. He ain't, no he, ain't he ain't obviously he not guarding Joel and B, but I'm saying like like when we go against Boston, we got murdered. They was slicing us up each and every way. I feel like because that's who probably we gonna see in the finals if we go to the finals. It's gonna be us in Boston. Man, give me SGA, man. <laughs> SGA is a bucket getter. So my thing is okay, but they, 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 I'm not, they're not trying to give up SGA. They're trying to give up Siakam. But I, I don't like Siakam like that, man. I don't. I don't think that. I mean, he's not a. He's not a guy. He's not a floor spacer. You know what I'm saying? He's not a one on one go get your buckets. You know, he definitely not, is a one on one get your buckets. Two, but two, he's, not a three, he's not a three. Twenty five points a game. He, he's not a three level score to me, man. I mean, he's he a little overrated, brother. Me too. Yeah, I seen the overrated. Oh yeah, DC. I need to talk to you about the overrated too, because you was last like two years ago. You was like, you was like, man, Duncan Robinson not a scammer. Duncan Robinson, he worth it. He is not worth no ninety million, dude. No, I ain't never said he was worth ninety million. Yeah, you did. I said that dude was scamming. He's like, nah, he he didn't scam them. He was worth that money. You really got to pay. I said he was worth ninety million. Yeah, you said he was worth ninety million. Well, if I told you that, brother, I humbly say I'm. I'll tell you that. Hey, but y'all, um, hey, 90 hey, million hey, to pay hey, somebody hey. just to make three pointers is a bit much. So I don't know if I misunderstood or I'm, I was just wrong, but I don't hey. believe he worked with that 90 million, even though he was shooting the three pointers. So, bro, y'all gonna stop jumping on DC, bro. Leave, leave DC alone, bro. I'm not jumping. <laughs> I'm just saying, like I told him, I told him like two years ago. I was like, yo, DC, he not worth no 90 million. He was like, yeah, that's what you gotta pay nowadays. So wait, 
So what about Mo? I mean, uh, Bo Bamba. Like he did shoot a three. He with, with, I mean, uh, I think he way better than Jackson Hayes. I mean, he can't take Jonas, but I mean, that would be a, a good little lineup with uh, depending on who you have on the court. I think Mo Bamba fit a uh, decent, and you got Larry Nance as a power forward. If so, I think that, I think that's uh, I think that's a good trade. Man, I, I keep telling you on the move that needs to be made is a bucket getter. Not, not, not. People keep saying we need rim protection and all that. Dude, we need a bucket getter. You, you, you get some guy that can get you that can get you some buckets. You ain't yeah. got to worry about the rest of that stuff. Yeah, well, that's true. The thing is, I mean, when Kyra is on the floor, he gives you valid uh, uh, points. Like he scored seven his first game. Uh, yeah, seven his first game. Scored 12 the next game or uh, whenever he got back in the game. Like, why is he not playing? But see, the, the thing about Willie, because Willie was a player and Willie was kind of a journeyman player himself, sometimes you give too much love to them type of cats who's like him, man. Sometimes you got to be a dog about that thing, you know. Say, hey, look, you know, uh, uh, what's his name, Graham, bro? I, I'm going to set you down, bro. You you ain't getting the job done. Right. You know, you got you got to give somebody else an opportunity. And, and it, ha it has to be a young guy. So you got KLJ, you got to make a decision on him anyway. So, bro, you got to kick the tires. You got to find out what you got. Hold on for a second, my brother. So shout out to Brother Thomas with the Super Chat. We need a Jordan Clarkson. So he kind of agreeing with Brother Moe's on the play. Aramis is saying, what would be the point of getting Pascal when he's about to be up for an extension? Do you understand that with Pascal, he operates around the same area as Zion? Exactly. Not, not good three ball, barely spacing. Thank you, Aramis, for the uh, for the super chat, my brother. <laughs> and dropping some science. I, Shout I, out I to you, Aramis, man. I don't, I don't think Pascal Siakam is like some. He's like barely an all star to me. I understand he get twenty five points a game and all that, but get all star pay. He said he would make a thirty five mil, bro. Exactly. Well, he got like paid that, that when he made when he made that all star mil, team. That's how huh? you You're getting paid like an all star. That's, that's what I'm saying. After he made that all star team, that's when he got paid. Um, I, I I think he's overrated. He's a good player, though. I'm not saying he's a bad player. I Wait, just, so this is the last year the contract. And for us, I, I think he's overrated. That dude ain't gonna want to come here and take no lesser role. You know, he gonna want he gonna want to be the man where he go at. He, he was the man in, in Toronto, but he don't fit. He not even. I don't think he's the man per se. Well, who the man over there? I mean, how you can be the man? How you the man you? No more. I don't know how you the man and you losing. I don't call. I'm not gonna call bro. you no man if you lose in the game. He the man, man, bro. He the man among, he the man <laughs> among the rest of them, though, bro. If they, I mean, because if you look at it from a contract standpoint, he makes yeah. way more money than anybody, bro. He makes more right. money. He's the highest paid player on that team. The next player underneath him is Fred Van Vliet. Hey, right. 20, with twenty one point two, followed by seventeen point three by OG. So, so he gonna come here to be the number three, four option. Hey, I man. mean, if he wanna win. I don't think the money works, bro. Man, y'all saw Terrence Ross tonight? Man, a guy like that to help us a bucket getter off the bench. That's all he need to be able to do is go get buckets. That guy would help you. You just I mean, need that's what we've, I was been, we've been clamming over Terrence Ross about, about two years now. Yeah, exactly. well, it, 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 either Terrence Ross or the, uh, uh, it, you know, what's the other dude we talked about, DC, the Pelican Killers from, from the Nuggets? It's several of them that we talked about. Uh, uh, that was Barton, the, but I think he went to the Wizards. Oh. Barton. Barton from the oh, Nuggets. Yeah, he used to kill us, too. Kill us every time he plays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Barton. several of them come. They got a lot of little George Carlson type guys, man. Uh, man, like, that's what like you need. Talking about that, just go out there. They ain't gonna play no D like talk about, but they they go get buckets. They gonna yeah. get buckets. They get them yeah, consistently every night. Yeah. Man, I, you know, I'll, I'll probably every team needs need some guys. Like I don't that. know if you guys remember back in the day when. Uh, when Carl Smith and Jim Morrow was with the Saints and we won with defense and all we did was kick field goals. Man, that's what we that's what it feels like on offense when with those guys out. Man, you need you need touchdowns, bro. You gotta get that's what I'm saying. Siakam mm -hmm. has a game that you definitely know he's gonna get a bucket with his game. And he plays good defense, so he's gonna fit well in the foot in the um system that we already have. But Plus, he operates like you, in the same area that that BI and and, and, and and Zion operate in, you know, mid post. You know, uh, file file line extended. Even he he operating that same kind of area right there at the nail. You know, he, he just you know you, you need a guy that 
that can do a little bit more than that for me. And he's not a playmaker because, you know, he's one-on-one trying to get his own thing going. So Yeah, they mentioned the, ult- the ultimate guy you're talking about uh, is Harrison Barnes, and that's a good comment by Wu, and that's another pe- uh, yeah, that's, that's, killer. That, that's, an that's the guy. ultimate. That's the, mm-hmm. al- that's the ultimate one right there, and mm-hmm. I think he would be a perfect fit for what the Pelicans can do. Uh, 15, averaging 15 points a game right now for the, the Sacramento Kings who come in a bit. So he didn't he didn't find a role right there. So Wolf, shout out for you for dropping that knowledge, man. Man, man I uh, think Harrison can, Barnes would be a real good one. You don't think you can get Terrence Ross for cheap? If yeah, so, I, mean, I, I, I would trade them uh, and Garrett Temple and Devontae Graham. But you're gonna have to throw a little sweetening in there, man, because you you're sending them garbage back. Because you know you know you always want to send your garbage out for people good stuff. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be able to throw something in there to make a man to entice a man because. Man, I don't want that. <laughs> All right, so I'll, 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 I'll throw in, I'll throw in a, a second round pick. No, they go. You gotta have to give up one of the more late. I'll give up one of the more late number one. Man. Wait, so many of them. wait, I wasn't really paying attention too close to the game. I was just looking at some like buckets that we made. Was Marco Fos doing good? Was he doing good? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did good in spurts. You the fella last week was talking about we need more. You know, cats can't play defense. I remember your voice. Can't can't play defense. Remember we were talking last week on here. You were saying, well, we we shouldn't get this one because McDonavich because he don't play no defense. No, no that's Jay Black. No, that, that's that Jay wasn't Black. kidding. That's, that's Jay Black. Black. And speaking of Jay Black, oh, Jay Black. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let yeah, 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 Jay Black get his ass on here tonight. Let Jay Black get over. We calling out Jay Black. Yeah, right yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm here because I, I was listening for a long time. I was listening to a lot of shit you were saying. But <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> so... So I, I, you you saying the bucket getters? You you just said you still um, want your, your Cam Reddish commentary? Jay Black, Jay we Black. need a bucket getter. Jay Black. Oh, okay, the bucket getter. You said Terrence Ross. He got eight points. That's bucket getter. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, it's how he got his eight. Come he, on, could, he, man. Couldn't really, he couldn't really dance because you know more bombing and bombing was going off. And when he, when right. he got his shot, hey, right, right, right. Said, man, no, no. Terrence Ross is a certified bucket getter. Man, you can go look at the numbers. You know, right. I, 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 look, he he, he oh wait he averaged eight points. He eight got points eight points, that? he averaged eight points. But I bet you on our team coming off I bet you coming off our bench. I bet you coming off our bench with our second unit when he when he's a focal point. I bet you'll get you more than eight. I didn't saw him putting numbers up, man. I've been following I, his career the whole time. I'm not talking about you you taking one little sample size of tonight's game. Wait, you know? I just said I said eight for the season. I didn't say what? eight for the game. I, eight for the game. He didn't eight for the think game. About this, Jay eight Black. for the season. Jay Black, think about this. He's a 31 year old and they're trying to develop their younger players. He's not getting that kind of minutes. That's why you can still the you just you just was going. I, I, I heard you say, yo, we need bucket get a deal. When I come on, I said I was just listening to all y'all say. And I was like, oh, all right, let me. So let me we don't need no bucket getter, Jay Black. We don't need no bucket Listen, getter. Listen, all right. Let's look at the let's look at I I would say uh the team that we lost to Orlando has one person injured. We have four. Four, okay. Four pick. And two of them are all stars. And one is averaging 15 off the bench. So two people that that average two people average over 20 points, and one person that's averaging 15. That's that's like I I, if my math does me right, that's that's 55 points. Right? Mm -hmm. And we're not even talking about the people that they going to get involved. This team was built around our stars. It wasn't built around going to get a bucket getter, an extra bucket getter. And if you need an extra bucket getter, you can play KLJ, but they're not going to play him right now because they're trying to trade Devontae Grant. But KLJ is not a certified bucket getter, man. Well, like based, based off his, his, his number, he, every time he played, yeah, he, he, was, him, he was though. getting buckets. Yeah. Last year, he was getting buckets. It's just he don't play long stints. He'll play no, short stints. But don't stints. act like last season we were saying we were saying KLJ was scared to get buckets. <laughs> KLJ was saying, we, no, we wasn't was saying that. Yeah, like you were saying, saying that. Don't, don't say we. No, it wasn't right. me. I wasn't saying that. I'm, I'm not naming no names because I don't do that type of stuff. But I'm saying Man, people I, were saying this. About about get a couple off your know. bench. Look, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's okay. get some stuff straight first because we I don't think we're on the same page. When we're talking a bucket getter coming off the bench, and we're talking about a guy like Microwave, Vinnie Johnson, we're talking Jamal Crawford. That's bucket getters. Not not okay. no 
You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about a certified bucket getter. What he's known as, I'm a bucket getter. I'm not talking about no guy who's young who might get you a bucket here and there. But these right. guys going to come and they're going to show up in big games right. on national TV and get you buckets. We they, talking they, about going to the finals, Jay Black. What are you, we yeah. talking about doing big stuff. We not yeah. talking about no little. We need wins now. Now nah. we trying to go to the finals now. Now, I mean, I'm, we ain't I'm got time to keep waiting until next year. We not <laughs> we're trying to develop no people. We oh, trying to go to the finals God. this oh, year, God. 2023. Jay Black, we not playing the we long trying game. Trying to book right our now. tickets now. Oh, we know God. we know we got injured players, bro. You know what I'm saying? And they gonna be they always injured. They always injured. But it don't hurt to have somebody that's sitting on your bench, man. That when somebody go down, or even when them boys are not going good, when he come in with that second unit, man, he, he's in there to do one thing. That's to get you some numbers, man. So you trying to compare KLJ to Malcolm Brodham. That's what you're trying to do right now. No, no, no. I wouldn't. Who, who, who I just said, now you're just bringing up random people. No, Malcolm that's what Brodham, I'm trying to, you that's what I'm trying to get to the team next number. level. I'm not trying what, to be what, on no. Wait, 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 wait. You, you mixing up a whole bunch of things. And you, and what, did you just say you wanted um Pascal Siakam to play center? I'm saying he's like, good, please. Like you, so that now you hopping on him saying you need a bucket, but Pascal gets buckets, but you're saying to play him at center. And then go small ball line. Oh wait, no, no, and small ball lineup. That's what name. Saying, so uh, oh my god. All right, so name the small ball lineup. <laughs> Pascal Siakam. What? We gonna have uh Bi mm -hmm. Zion. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's on the team? CJ McCollum. There you go. Dyson Dane. If Dyson okay. Dane is still here. Or maybe you could keep your dude, KLJ. Oh, Herb, man, what do you think about that? <laughs> I am. Okay. <laughs> we got that Herb in there. We need to Okay, so you're not. So, you're so, not, so who, 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 who are you trying? Oh, yeah, no, no, we can put anybody gonna... out there with that team. We can put me. I, I, I'll go I, out there I, and score I, some I, buckets. I, I, that's, that's right. $35 million, and we already going to be in a luxury tax next year. Who do we trade for? How do we get them? What? Because it's $35 million. Or $34 million, it says here. $34 million. Yeah, we would have to move, I don't think it fits. move Valentunis. Yeah. Move Valentunis. Valentunis? We have to move... Uh, How much do Valentunis make? Like 11 million. No, no, no. Valentunis, I think, make like 17 or 18 million. Okay. You make 17, 18 million? You lying. Yeah. Nah, nah. Yeah, that's what you should be making. 14. Yeah, it's like right in the middle of what both I thought he was making 11 million. No, man, he making... Uh, that the the number still... The, the math ain't math. 14, though. 7. 14, huh? 7? 14-7. And the then how much you making next year? I don't have that. I, I think you got to trade him for this year. But let's talk about this year. He makes 14. 14. Yeah, matter, but... um, Devontae Graham is 12. That's 26. What 26. else are we doing? We still need seven. We still, we, still, we still need some more to match. Just him. Yeah. And then we got what? And then, okay, so then we got uh, Jax Hayes making five. Okay. Still, <laughs> still not, still don't add up. Still don't add up, and then plus they gonna want, they gonna want one of them Rudy Gobert kind of trades for him, bro. You gonna have to give up too much for him. You gonna give it too much for him, so that that exact yeah, yeah. him out. No, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work unless so you're gonna you're, give up a bi or something. Oh, that's what you. No, you're not gonna touch the core. Oh yeah, I'm no, I'm I'm asking him. Oh, are you gonna give up bi? And then what if we put in Gary Temple? That's that's like, another five million. <laughs> so so we gonna trade four for one. What are we getting back? That's what I'm saying. I'm trying yeah. to win now. Nah, but I'm trying to win now. I don't know about I don't you. Think that's one of the smartest no. general managers in the game. He's not going to take that. He's not going to take no pill no. like that. That don't that make sense. Real smart, he's going to put five play. number one draft picks to go along. Yeah, right. five right. number one draft pick and four players that... that I don't, I, I, I'm, doing, I, I'm, I'm doing it. Whatever I got to do to win a championship, bring a championship home, I'm doing and it. And that don't even guarantee it. I think that, that guarantees that guarantees a finals ring on the wait, I'm four, wait. Four first and foremost. Now you have a who, who's gonna be our starting center that you gave Ooh. away our starting center. Shit, I'm gonna be the fucking starting center for all that. But if anybody could be the starting center, that, that, that's that's when that come on, that's when you go for rails. All right, now that that's illogical. I ain't gonna even talk about that now. Because uh, that don't make sense. No, I, I'm not even. I, I'm not even going over that. So, yeah. So, so, so I wasn't gonna come up here. I was just gonna sit back and. But oh no, if you saying up, up, huh? We want you on here. We want you to talk. No, nah, if you say a bucket getter. Um, okay, so I, got I don't think I don't think Ross. I don't. But if you can get Ross for cheap, 
You can who, get him for who? For who? If, if they're going to do it, who? Man, you can do Devontae Graham and, and, and somebody to match the money and maybe one of them that that uh that he, 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 he can make more than he make more than Devontae Graham. Yeah, I think he make about 18 mil somewhere in there. Check it out, Q. Yeah, he, yeah, he get paid, hey, man. I got a question. What are we gonna okay. do with Willie Hunter Gomez? Oh, uh, listen. I, I what I say is I was saying is 11 5, couple, bro. 11 5. That's yeah, he mad, he just him and Devontae Graham the same amount yeah. of money. So that's that could straight tra- swap if they want to do that. Yeah, but you're gonna have to throw a little something in, maybe two seconds or something, man. And we know? don't we don't care about seconds, so that could do it. But I don't know if they'll take that. Now you but know if, 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 if you'll do that, I'll take it. Yeah, because I think that's what I would try and do because I don't really think you need to make a big move, and you gotta mm-hmm. watch the luxury tax, man. What we dealing with? You know, we just we ain't got that kind of man. Our money ain't like that. Uh, so. I, I say get somebody else. I say go for Bobo Bo and uh like Bo Mo Bo. Bamba. But it, one uh, um oh yeah or Mo Bamba. One of the I say Bobo, Bo, but that's, I don't even know how much he makes. I say we doing you, with Willie Hunter Gomez. Them boys on their first contract. All right, now Willie Hunter Gomez. What I would say now, are we going to give up Big V? If we going if you, if you saying oh, oh. prioritize prioritize uh Willie Hernan Gomez they pl- they bo- they both play similar similar styles they got similar faults they got similar offensive styles but you know Big V a slower version um I I don't know I I don't know cuz I, I really mean don't. That, that, because that small lineup I don't hear no Larry Nance no Willie Hernan Gomez I mean, like small ball. I'm going. I mean, if you need defense or if you need a defensive stop or whatever it may be, I'm going Dyson Daniels, Herb Jones, Jose, uh, Larry Nance. Oh, that's and... that. Nah, that's no scoring. No scoring, no buckets. No man. scoring. Yeah, you need some scoring. Unless you're playing against a team that don't got no dynamic score on the other end. Or don't get hey, I mean, but, hey, but Jay Black, you know what would be a good trade? Now, now you, that you talk Thomas, about it. You. A yeah. good trade would be if you got Terrence Ross and Mo Bamba and, and you sent them back Devontae Graham and Jackson Hayes. That's what I was saying. Now, that would be a good trade. Yeah. That, would, that would help us. But will will Willie play Mo Bamba at the four? No, he'd have to play the five. He would be your, he would have to be your five guy. He would be your backup five. And then Larry Ness will come in at the four. As a, as a, as a four. Uh, Back up four. But we we're assuming we're assuming Zion I, Zion is still hurt. We are going to, have to assume that he's still hurt. So we move the way we moving right now is based off of him being hurt. I just think that would help you, man, because you got a guy to come off the bench that's going to be able to score with your second unit, right? And then you got that backup center that you need because man, Willie yeah. Gomez, he good, but you know you know what he remind me of. He's like a poor man, Moses Malone. You know, Moses Malone used to shoot them layups and miss them and keep tapping and tapping them until they go in. But, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's kind of stats. Yeah, he don't do it like that consistently. You know what I'm saying? So, I think, I think, man, that 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 trade would benefit both teams, right? Because they're taking the flyer on uh, on uh, on Jackson Hayes. Okay. And then, you know, Terrence Ross ain't really doing nothing on that bench because he's stopping their young players from developing playing a guy that's 31 right now. So I, I think that you know that's something I would call it if I if I'm a which which what my man call him knock the pussy or whatever if yeah. I was, I would call him I, I, th- I think I think that that ain't his name no more I think we had to change that name he, he been he been out of the out of the weeds he ain't been giving us no problem that's that's one trait I, I I wouldn't really have a problem with it I don't have no, a problem with it do nothing together bro we got together on something right there uh the 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 one. Person I've been saying for a minute is Kelly Olynyk. Uh, he's a big man. He can stretch the floor. He can stretch the floor. He can play with anybody. He can play at the four or the five, and he's playing the four right now. So, it, I, I think that's a person we and he plays on Utah Jazz. So we could go at the what, what's another player on the Utah Jazz that they got a slasher that Malik Beasy. 
Bleasy. Malik Bleasy. That's what it was. That was the trade. Those are the only two trades I can see us doing. I don't see anything else. I don't see a big splash. I, I think only small moves we could do. But they still they're gonna be hesitant because we don't got our full team. To make a big splash. I still think they might try to get uh Bojan Bogdanovic. Nah, luxury tax. That's what but I'm saying the report's saying that they in the, they're looking for it, they inside the mix with it. So Man. unless it's a three is unless it's a three team trade, yeah. Nah, we ain't gonna do that. It, the money don't match. The they got a lot of sellers. They got a lot of sellers at the at the deadline. Nah, you you could you could try for them, but if that gives us a championship, they they pay the luxury tax. But I don't think they're gonna do that. Take a flyer on him, and there's no that luxury tax. That luxury tax is a beast in the small market. Exactly. Yeah. No, so they. I think. They think all different. They gonna make their money back when they start winning games, though. That's the problem. I mean, that's what they. That's what they got to look at. Because they already seen a boost in the side of these, all these games being sold out. All these games being sold out every time. Think Keep on with this winning. About, think about Bogdanovich and, and Terrence Ross, right? Man, there that, that ain't a whole lot of difference between them cats. The only difference is uh, Bogdan, Bogdanovich is in a situation where he gets to put that ball up as much as he wants, right? Because Detroit don't have anybody else. Right, right. Yeah, they don't have nobody. They need to score. Man, I think you can still. Like, I would prefer Terrence Ross to be honest. I've been saying I want Terrence Ross, and I feel like Terrence Ross played better defense than uh, Badanovich. I, I, I agree with that. Yeah, but he's just, right. but he's a better scorer in that he can score more ways. You know, Badanovich is more three point range, and he'll you know take that dribble and and uh, hit that mid range. But he's not really a three level guy. With but I'm thinking Badanovich knows the game better than Terrence Ross. Like I was watching him play the other day, and I could just see him breaking down the defense and understanding yeah, makes. Him, Marcus. Yeah, how to, yeah, he know how to control the offense and stuff like that better than Terrence Ross does. Terrence Ross is just a fucking shooter and not like he not really trying to read the defense and shit. Uh right, y'all go ahead and um, make your final comments. Uh, we're gonna give a thanks to uh, Big Q and DC for uh, going live and making us uh, part of the show this Friday. Um, then again, like I said, I know I know we lost, but I know we 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 an injury prone team. And uh, that's it. And then once y'all make y'all final uh, thoughts, I'm going to end the show. Well, I think it, the reason why B.I. not coming back out, they're just trying to get, they just trying to heal up, save them for the playoffs because they know this dude is very injury prone. So they're just trying to make sure everything, the precaution. I said, uh, like, I feel like they could doing all this because of AD and stuff. He's got the, a strict, strict lockdown with, I mean, a strict, strict uh, uh, protocol with the, uh, the medical team and staff after that situation and plus with the Zion situation. So they're not trying to take any chances. And uh that's what I got to say about that. Good on Jay Black. You almost made me act like Jim Mora. Playoff. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 I would say um I think I always fall on coaching. When when we when we take losses, first it start with the coaching. I think um us playing nine players, I don't think that was the right move. We could have squeezed another player somewhere in this. I think KLJ could have played. Or oh, Willie Hernan Gomez. We need to try other options. Um, we're not trying enough. And our defense, um, them scoring 124 points, I will say is because of the free throws. We got yeah, to we we no, learn how to play defense without fouling or, and take some charges. Like Jackson Hayes, um, I, I remember the play. It was in the third quarter. He was playing defense. All he had to do was fall. That dude ran right into his chest and finished and won. Uh, we don't we we don't got the uh, the basic defense like the basic uh, take a charge and box out. We don't do the small things. We lose games by. Not free throwing, not making our free throws, not boxing out, <laughs> not making open three pointers, not doing a forty five cut when when instead of if you can't shoot, dive to the basket, take to the basket instead of standing for a goddamn three point shot. We don't do the basic things. I I just don't I don't know. That that that'll be all for me. All right, go ahead on uh, uh Simmons. Well. 
<clears throat> like I said, man, I I I, I kind of feel like Jay Black came in with some smoke tonight, and I believe you know if we if we look at a small trade, you know, add a, add a piece here, a bucket getter, you know, I like the Mo Bamba and uh, Kevin Ross for uh, you know maybe Jackson and uh, Devontae because I think that's an equal trade right there, and then you throw a little sweeter sweetener in there, I think we'll be okay, and I think we need to get KLJ an opportunity right now, so. Other than that, man. Uh, well, Jay Black, let me ask you this: If we had to go for somebody, like say we had to go, for, we had we had uh, a big trade. Who, yeah. who would be the big trade, like ideal big trade for you in this situation? Ideal, I'll, I, uh, I can't even say it. Ideally, ideally big trade. Yeah. Um, what we are lacking, what we're lacking, uh, it. To put me on a spot. I, I, I think it's more a uh, center, center position. So like a fucking like like from the a dude stretch, from Indiana, a, huh? Like the dude Miles from Indiana. Turner? Yeah, Miles Turner. Um, I, I, it could be, it could be, but not. It's not a big enough trade. If you saying a big trade, that won't get us a championship. No, I don't. But it, it'll get us more versatile. I don't think it'll get us a championship. Uh, we we'll still have to make another move. So, like, who then? Um, I, 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 I don't know. That's available or just yeah, anybody? Yeah, like, ava- like, yeah, that's like available. Because like, I said Pascal Siap because I know he's available and I like his game. I'm just saying I like his game. Um, then you got to look at bad teams and uh, and let me look uh at a few bad teams and see what we could get from a bad team that's willing to sell. Uh, that's what I have to do. Let me see. Let me look at it one real quick. Well, look, before... hey, hey. Well, look, y- y'all can talk about that on my channel because I'm about to go talk about the game and talk much about the game too. Do you see what you got? Come on. Do you see? What's your channel, my man? Uh, State of the Pelicans. Okay. Yo, do you see what you got? I think he's sleep. I'm I'm sitting back listening, man, to the family. Uh, I think uh, everybody had very interesting points, a lot of good ideas, some things we obviously going to disagree with coming from all points. Um, small trade is obviously the best idea. Uh, Jay Black brought up uh, Kelly Olenek. I don't think anybody will be mad at that. As well as Mo's uh, with Mo Bamba. Uh, my man would – Siakam, I think you're a little far left with that, but if we were able to get uh, OG Ananobi or Gary yeah. Trent Jr. and we didn't give up the house, you know, what I about Fred Van Vito? Do that as well. So it's uh, or even a John Clarkson. I've seen that thrown out. Uh, I don't think anybody would be mad if you got a John Clarkson over here. That makes no, but they ain't giving them. They ain't, they ain't a six, six, six seed. Uh, matter of fact, that Kelly Olenek is going to be out because they six seed. And they they four games behind us. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That, that's but not. But it's, be the, it's, it's 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 the Jazz though, man. They're they're not trying to. They stockpiling picks, bro. A lot of them guys they got on their team. I know they're winning, but they might not keep all of that going forward. I don't really think the okay. Jazz. Are I think I know you're talking about Jay Black. By default. But, you might be talking about Cat or some <laughs> shit like that. I don't. I don't uh, think the Jazz are concerned with winning. Minnesota like Timberwolves. Yeah, cat. That's what you trying to say, like a like a big dude, like a big trade. No, nah, they seven seed. So, they seven seed. Yeah, wow. that, it's, these teams ain't ain't that bad. Like you looking at a San Antonio, or Houston Rockets, a Detroit Pistons, or uh a Hornets. They ain't giving up um ball. So Lamelo Ball. Yeah. Uh, and he probably too much anyway. You would next... Big Cat anyway, man. That don't fit. Yeah, Big Cat, I, I, he don't play no defense. But he, but he, he, get, like he gets some buckets, jazz, though. Black, I, I, some buckets. The, the Jazz are winning by default. I don't think they started this season intending on being where they at, man. They're trying to go through a rebuild. I think they've accelerated it. All the picks they got from Minnesota. I think they would like to get a nice pick this year, and I wouldn't be surprised to see them start shutting guys down. No, uh, listen, the, the they, they they talking about a resurgence and 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 tall ball. Utah played tall ball and Orlando played tall ball. They play a lot of big guys all through their lineup. 
Uh, and Cleveland, too. But yeah, it's a lesser extent. But Cleveland only take two big guys. Like, they they playing bowl bowl at the three. Like, I, I don't know. Orlando, th- th- they I think they height and length mess with us. But I think if we had our regular squad, we'd have blew them out. But neither hit out there. It's a bad matchup for us. Yeah. I, I say – that <laughs> and they're deep too. You can't count them out. Yeah, they're, they're really super deep. deep. Yeah, that, I I didn't expect them to be that deep. Right. But then, you know, um, I don't see any, no major deal. Like unless you're getting a Bradley Bill, but he's too much money. What about Christos Porzingis though? And, nah. <laughs> well, if that's nah. <laughs> it, 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 well, if that's the case, I mean, even with Cat, I mean, Carl Anthony Towns. And you're gonna have to give up Jonas, and I, I don't, I, I'm not doing that. Even though Jonas, you gotta give him up. Like I, yeah, I know, but even though Jonas don't shoot, do I want him to shoot? Cause he, 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 he hit it through the night. I don't know what, I think something happened on the defensive end, and they got him, and he can't right back down and like, and he made the three. So I'm not giving up Jonas. Uh. I'm I'm looking at uh, uh, Aaron Gordon or somebody. Uh, 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 no, nah, he's not coming back to this team. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm... not no, not oh. Eric Gordon. Eric Gordon. Oh, uh, Aaron Gordon. Yeah, Eric Gordon. Oh, oh. they on, they on the Denver Nuggets. They number one in the West. Or like nah. somebody like uh, somebody like Blake Griffin because they they not using him in uh, Blake Griffin. Oh, it, um, the Brooklyn Nets. No, uh, they no, might. So, no, no, so he's yeah. he on Celtics. Oh, he's on Celtics? Yeah, yeah, he's on oh, Celtics. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. God, he, he don't, no, he don't, he, he's so, a shell of himself. Yeah, unless, you give it, unless you're giving up somebody like a backup for him. Yeah, uh-huh. Gary Temple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's about it. That's about it. That's uh, an even uh, trade. I don't I, 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 the, the, the best, <laughs> the best thing we can go for is somebody like I t- the Washington Wizards or the Toronto Kyle Raptors. Kuzma. Fuck, Kyle Kuzma. That's exactly who we need. Kyle Kuzma. Get Kyle Kuzma to the public right now. Okay. It just, I, I said. For, for what? Devontae Graham and Jackson Hayes and and Gary Shit. Temple. I, I don't want Kyle Kuzma. I, I, Why you don't I, want Kyle I, Kuzma? I, Kuzma see? Yeah, yeah. I, I understand. No, because Kyle Kuzma is a guy that uh at, at his best he's uh what's your boy man I'm talking about talking about a bucket getter. What, what's yeah, that's what from, we need a bucket getter. Be with Utah. Well, he, yeah, he's still with Utah. Bogdan. Uh, nah, uh, Mike Conley. No, the little guy used to play with the Lakers with Kyle Kuzma and Brandon Ingram and all of them. Oh, Terry Hunt Tucker. Six man, six man. Yeah, yeah, Talon Horton Tucker. Talon Tucker. Right Talon Horton Tucker. Who's just talking about a trade? Trade to us. Talon Horton Tucker. That was him. No, no, not him. Look at the trades, man. Colin Col- Col- Saxon. Jordan Jordan Clarkson. Jordan Clarkson. Jordan Clarkson. Kyle Kuzma is a Jordan Clarkson level player. He's saying he's a superstar. Well, Jordan Clarkson walks over here and it, it try to turn into the band and all that. It's just if just he gives him twenty one points off the bench, I'm saying uh, you can yeah, be but it's not, it's not sustainable because <laughs> he's going to want a, a bigger role. And I, I just don't think it will mesh well. Long what do you think a bigger yeah, role is? Be better, better than the season out of it. But he he wants to be a guy. He want to get paid, man. That dude contract coming oh, out. He want to get oh, paid. His contract is up? Oh no, then we can't get him if he, if his, his contract is done after this year. I don't know if it's after this year, but I know it's coming up. He's due for oh. an extension at some point. I'm not he want to be up. I think he. I think he's a free agent this year. If I'm not mistaken. Oh no, nah, then that's no trade then. Because well, he gonna want money. Want to sign him anyway, so. and give him that money. How cool's we don't care about winning. Kyle Kuzma want money. Oh, I got that. Go what, ahead. What uh, about what, Al, Al, Alex Caruso? No, that's what mm-hmm. you got in Jose Alvarado. I mean, mm-hmm. he, he's the a bull said he's willing to bust up everything, but they keep it Alex Caruso. Oh, they bust <laughs> up everything, but they keep him. 
we we probably got a better shot at the rules in, 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 in Levine. Wow. Right. Huh? Give me, give you said they want Levine. to keep balance the rules. So, man, that article come out about it this week. I was, I was like, what? That don't make sense. But, hey. That don't make sense either. Yeah. Well, rules are, uh, are sucking. So, that would, that would explain a lot. That's what happened when you trade. I mean, when you, yeah, when you get uh, Lonzo Ball, you I'm start great. thinking crazy shit. <laughs> we, <Yeah. laughs> go go ahead on yeah. big uh big Q. Go ahead on say your closing comments and I and I and I got the free the page. Shout out to the fam, man. Appreciate y'all joining us for the show tonight. Much love to the panel. Appreciate y'all, man. Pelicans uh right now three game slide, man. We're gonna keep looking at this thing, man, and see what happens uh against the Miami Heat. Could be for a lot of adjustments have to be made. The team gotta check itself in terms of heart and, and effort. That's the two biggest things right now outside of some roster movements or bringing guys in and out at this time. But right now, what we can do most certainly, we play with more heart and determination straight up and complete these games, as the coach really going to tell them. Go ahead, DJ. Go ahead and make your move, bro. But shout out to the fam. Thank all y'all, panel, and the flock for listening tonight. Go ahead, DJ. Uh, thank y'all. Um, if anybody come to you and ask, what are we doing with the Pelicans? You tell them in a New Orleans accent to get the flock out of here and go flock yourself. Ah, ah. <laughs> Shout out to the fam. Oh, um, Serge Ibaka. What else? What else, Serge Ibaka? All right. All right, fam. We're gonna <laughs> All right, I'll talk about, about that later. Much love, fam. We're going to holler at y'all. Peace All right. and go pals. All right. All right. Check out the Pro Shop. That's right, the Pro Shop is the platform store where you can go and buy all the latest merch to support the platform. Available at the Pro Shops, we have dozens of hundreds of products available for you and your family. Unisex tees for men and women, hoodies and sweatshirts, tank tops, kids and baby items, long sleeve tees, mugs, pillows, wall art, bath bedding, face masks, phone cases, stickers, bags, fanny packs, socks, hats, and many other items. Please feel Feel free to check out the pro shops. The link is in the description section below. And remember, it helps the platform continue to grow. Check out the pro shop and who that took.